Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they had seen the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, during the Easter vigil last Saturday night, we had the first part of John 20, the story of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb early in that morning, the first Easter. And Mary exhibited no fear, not even in conversation with the angels in the tomb. And that's something that's normal all throughout the scriptures, is that when you see an angel, you're afraid. But there she is, all by herself, wandering around outside, alone in the garden. But these male disciples, even after hearing the good news from Mary, even after the witness of Peter and the beloved disciple who saw the empty tomb and the linens folded up, they're still locked up in the upper room in fear. Fear of the religious authorities. It says fear of the Jews, but that's not quite right because you've got to remember that all these folks are Jewish. It's fear of the authorities and fear for the readers of this gospel, the first readers who feared persecution from the religious authorities, and they could relate as they read the account of Easter evening. Yet locked away in an upper room, afraid. Fear is a theme of struggle throughout the ages. Religious persecution of those first disciples and the first believers and the Roman persecutions. Fear of persecution during the Reformation for Martin Luther and the other reformers. 
fear for some of the other denominations getting started as there were internecine battles among the, among the different Christians. Fear of plagues. A plague happened during Martin Luther's story. Fear of prejudice, racism, struggles. Fear of weather events. Fear for many folks throughout the ages of whether God loves us or not and whether God is saving us or not. A lot of this fear leads to isolation, doesn't it? Even as the disciples hear good news, even as we begin to hear good news and have the opportunity, many of us, to get our vaccinations, to get back into the life of our culture, the life of our communities and families, some of us still are struggling with fear and what that might look like and how in some ways it's been comfortable not to have to deal with other people. That's <laughs> how some people feel about this. But that's not the message of Easter brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not the message at all. The message of Easter pulls us out of fear and brings us into community as we discover new life together. It's the task of the church to learn to listen to one another, to learn more and more day after day to care for one another, to try to see each other's perspectives about what this life is like, to build safe communities and do our part to keep our communities safe in all kinds of ways, and to reach out and build safe spaces for those who still struggle. I read a little story this week about people getting onto an airplane in this day and age. And so everybody's wearing their masks and a couple is traveling on the airplane and they come into the plane and there are two seats are together and it's a three across and so there's a 16 year old boy at the window seat has his mask on he's not communicating at all he's looking away from them ignoring them and so they don't speak you know how it is leave the other people alone if they don't want to interact they got up into the air, and then there was huge turbulence. And the pilot came on and said, sorry folks, we're doing the best we can, but we're gonna be in this turbulence for a while. So hold on and we will fly through it. And right after that, the 16 year old boy said to his partners, that couple, um, excuse me, folks, but you're going to have to talk to me. Because, you see, this is the first time I've ever been on a plane, and I am scared to death. So please, just talk. Help me get through this. So the couple started asking about the boy, telling them a little about themselves, saying, They've been through some turbulence, but you know, this one's a little bit bad, but we're going to get through this because that pilot sounds like he knows what he's doing. And by the time they got through the turbulence and then got to their destination, they had made a new friend. They reached out when this boy called for help. The boy understood that he wasn't alone. And that's what we have to do sometimes, is to let people know they're not alone, that we're in this together. And while we're in this together, we have good news to share, as we hear in this story. Because Jesus comes through those locked doors in the midst of the disciples' fear. He doesn't judge them because they were hanging out together in a locked room and Mary had been out by herself. He comes in and he says, peace be with you. 
He meets us where we are. He listens to us. He comes through our locked doors and our locked hearts. And that brings us hope. But Jesus no sooner shares that peace than he kicks them out anyway. Yep, he brings peace. He brings his enduring presence to whatever we face in our lives, and he lets us know he's going to be right there beside us and never let us go. But then, right out the door with a mission to share the peace of the risen Christ, to share the teaching, the healing, the forgiving that we have first received by the love of God. We are to be an Easter people together, pointing out that the risen Christ is with us no matter what we've been through and no matter what we have to face in the future. Christ is with us and never lets us go. And we are to rely on this loving God of ours, this God in Christ. And that be begins to bring us peace to our own lives, to our families, and to the world around us. Already, in the second Sunday of Easter, we're learning about the Pentecost reality, that the Holy Spirit is given to us Jesus breathes on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. He gives us the breath of God, inspiring us as a church for mission together. Just as God breathed life into Adam in that second chapter of Genesis creation story. The Holy Spirit is a tool for mission lifting us up, empowering us together to be God's people. It all sounds well and good. But do you sometimes doubt this story? Doubt this good news? In the midst of all the struggles we've been through, how could you do that to us, God? So if we doubt and when we doubt and when we struggle, we find ourselves in very good company. For Thomas did not, could not, believe that any of this was real. After all, seeing is believing, and he hadn't seen a thing. Thomas' insistence does indeed help us on this road to faith. You see, this Jesus does understand our sufferings, as, as we just talked about. And Jesus understands our doubts in the midst of those struggles. Our struggles, our pain. How do we know Jesus knows our pain? Because he went through it himself. Real nail wounds, real stab wound in the side. Evidence, even after the resurrection, that God knows what we go through in life and in death. William Temple writes, the wounds of Christ are his credentials to the suffering race of humanity. His credentials. He has credibility. So Jesus invites Thomas to verify. Yeah. The wounds are real. And Thomas's response is the strongest proclamation in the Gospels. My Lord and my God. Wow. This witness ever new Easter season after Easter season boosts our faith, pulls us out of isolation and fear. So we continue to pray for relief from this isolation, for reconnection with family, reconnection in our community and in our churches. As 
everyone who can, does the work to rid us of this dreadful pandemic. May the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit comfort us, inspire us, as we proclaim this new life in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.